Blackpool, 4-2 victory against Hungerford Town, but what a magnificent game that was. Yeah, and I thought both sides equally contributed to it. I've got to say, I thought they were fantastic. The first 10 minutes, they started like a train. You know, obviously with our problems that we had this morning, actually naming a team even, and then the 10-day isolation, um, you know, they were very, very good and they created two opportunities in that first 10, 15 minutes that perhaps they should have taken one of them. And then I thought we got into the game really well. I thought from 15 to 45, played some really good football, good crosses in the box, um, put them under pressure, got corners from it, throw-ins from it. You know, and, I mean, you, you're there a lot for training. You see how hard we mm. work on set pieces and the runs we make. And, you know, it's about the ability of the, the taker also. And I thought Josh Taylor's, you know, into the box, his delivery was superb mm. for the goals. Um, could have, should have got another one before half time. And then, you know, this beautiful game of ours, you think at 2-0, you talk about keeping it tight for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then within 30 seconds, they've gone and got their goal. Uh, I think that was disappointing from our perspective. One ball over the top, uh, ball in. thought Mags may have just been able to actually control the ball, but he's flicked it, and he's flicked it to a man who, um, you know, has, has been fantastic this season, Ryan Seeger. And Ryan, as I said, he's a great finisher. I think we saw that twice today. Uh, two each, it looked like. You know they that they were going to be the ones that were going to go on and win the game. I thought they, you know, the the way they went to their bench and the way they celebrated the goal. Maybe they felt they'd won the mm -hmm. game at that point. And um, you know what we showed. I thought for the next half an hour we changed our shape, which worked. You know I thought Robbo going as a sweeper stopped the long ball over the top. And you know we created chance after chance to be fair, and their keepers made three or four magnificent saves. One from Wrighty with his foot was outstanding. You know Joe's come on and had two or three chances. Their keepers made some good saves. So, you know, it was just a brilliant game, I thought. It was end-to-end -end football. Hungerford certainly didn't didn't sit in at two each. They looked to keep going. And, you know, it was end-to-end. -end. And I thought the game was a credit to both sides, credit to the National League and the quality of football on, on show. So we go again down there on Tuesday. You know, we're under no illusions, it's going to be a tough game. Um, but it's important to get the three points. And, you know, we'll see what we can get out of Tuesday night. Did the style of play just complement what we saw this afternoon? What, ours or theirs? Both teams, both, both the way both teams I think teams you've play. got, I, I think that Hungerford traditionally have stuck this season, start very, very sharp in games. You know, they look to go and hunt those goals in that first 15 and 20 minutes. And, you know, I complimented them after the Bath performance where they got 2-0 in front and went, right, see if you can beat us. But, you know, we were 2-0 in front today and they had mm -hmm. to keep coming, they had to keep coming and they did. Um, and like I said, after 54 minutes when Ryan's got the second goal, mainly, you know, sometimes in football you think that's, that's going to be their day. So the character shown, um, managers will always talk about this, but the character shown and, you know, the response, you know, was very, very good. And, uh, you know, that was probably the most pleasing part of the day for me was response to, you know, a sickening blow, really, to, to lose two goals in, in what was sort of an eight minute spell. Four goals, four different goal scorers and from different areas of the field. Obviously, the first two, uh, Craig Robson, Sam Magri at the back, then Betsy in midfield and then Tommy White up top uh, finishes it off in the end. Yeah, in, in a system, you know, the four-one-four-one that we play, it's a system that does allow the midfielders to really get in the box, and you, you know, you you should, from our set piece delivery, you know, be looking at your centre half scoring probably eight or ten goals a season. So it doesn't surprise me that we get different goal mm -hmm. scorers. Um, you know, Wright is a threat in himself up front, but we have, you know, we do try and flood the box when the crosses come in. Um, so yeah, it was, it was it's always a good thing for a manager. You can't rely on one person really scoring all the goals. So to get them from all areas of the pitch is always always a good thing. Obviously, it was a great game, regardless of circumstances, but there was a lot of circumstances going into today's game. I know that you've had a, a busy morning yourself mm. dealing with a, a load of different circumstances. Yeah, I mean, what's happening at the moment is, you know, every time my phone goes off, um, you know, you panic because it's almost inevitably been a player or a member of staff that has to self-isolate because one of their family has had a positive test. And, you know, we're doing everything we can you know, to stay safe and uh, and stay healthy, but it's very hard. And, you know, I had a phone call this morning from Strakes, who was obviously starting, uh, and his wife feels unwell, so he's got to self-isolate. And if hopefully negative tests come back, then he can join the club back. Uh, then I get another phone call, uh, Theo Widrington and Daniel Akajay and uh, Keds. You know, Keds rings me at, at nine this morning. I mean, the, the list was endless mm -hmm. in the end. You know, we're missing three members of staff. Uh, in Tash and uh, and Jordan, obviously Richie Pope. Yeah. Uh, we wish Richie well. Um, you know he's slowly getting better. He's currently at the QA. Uh, he's been in hospital for five days. So, 
you know, all of us were thinking a lot about Richie's. Mm. It's been a, it's been it's been tough, and I think the biggest one was Rory. You know, Rory losing his dad uh, to COVID twelve days ago. You know, therefore he's had to self isolate. But on top of that, deal with you know the real private issue of losing a losing losing his father. Uh, and the real big thing today was obviously he wasn't playing uh, at all, not even on the bench. And then you know he he rang me and said he'd go on the bench because we were struggling for numbers. And then. At Eleven o'clock this morning, he ends up having to play, and uh, you know, I asked him to. He didn't. He didn't flinch. He said, "Yeah, you know, I'd like to get out there." So, it's a very emotional dressing room before the game uh, and afterwards for him. Uh, and you know, it was, it was a nice moment really. The, the way the players got round him, and you know, it's a, it was a it was a bad loss for him. You know, he's very close to his his dad and his mum, and uh, you know, it was, it was for Rory today really, and Richie Pope. I think they're, they're you know they're the two that we've all been sort of hoping. You know, I'm praying for yeah. if you like, and you know the other situations. As I said, I've never known it in my time as a manager, ever. Uh, and I just like to pay enormous credit to that group of players who mm. put on a great performance. Um, you know, he's an 18 year old out there today who's making his debut. You know, he's had eight weeks out injured. Mm. Um, I thought he was superb, yeah, yeah. and I keep saying that I've said it in interviews. Christian Rowe is is one for the future, higher level. Uh, he's going to be a top top player. I thought Backy came in, only came in Thursday. Uh, again, probably wouldn't have started him not under normal circumstances. Backy starts, and I thought for an hour, you know, he's, he was he, he gave us a real threat, in, especially in the first half. Um, you know, and you look at overall performances. Robson, man of the match, for what you know, how Robbo's come back this season has been mm-hmm. phenomenal. And again, against a lot of personal, and this is what people don't know. You know, the the amount of they're not robots, footballers. Mm. They've they've got their own personal lives and private lives, and you know we've had a dressing room in there that's been very very tight. Mm. We've we've got personal situations that we all know about. Um, they're not for public consumption, but the players look after each other in there, and it's a real, real tight dressing room, you know. And uh, that's that's the most pleasing thing for me. I've just watched the dressing room grow together over this last sort of six weeks, and when you see the reaction. You know, we, we could have folded after Marine and losing to Hemel. Mm-hmm. It would have been easy to go into a bad spell, feel, feel sorry for ourselves. You know, I, I look at our season now, it's, it's quarter of the way through. We've, we, we, we're we hitting two points a game, which is brilliant. It's, that's, that can win you a league. We've made the club 100 grand in the FA Cup and we're the last 32 of the trophy. Now, if anyone tells you that at the start of the season, you'd absolutely smash their hand off mm-hmm. for it. So, as I said, we've had lots of bumps in the road this year. Um, lots of things happen within the dressing room that we you know, aren't for public consumption. But we've dealt with it and dealt with it well. And um, you know, even players that aren't here today, they're not, you know, they're, not, they're not here for a reason. And you know, we've all of us talked to each other. You know, there's lots of phone calls going on at the moment to make every, sure everyone mm-hmm. else's families are okay. It's, it's tough, you know. Theo Widrington, you know, desperate to be here today, but not allowed to be. And um, you know, I think it's a real credit to the group how they've responded and now they've looked after each other. I know it's a cliche to call it a family, but it really is. Uh, I mean, even like Christmas and New Year's Eve, there's a WhatsApp group that the players are all in and they all wish each other good health, wish their families well. And it, it is, as you say, really tight-knit. And I think the situation that we're in that year with COVID and, as you say, other things that have gone in in people's lives, you want that tight-knit in and, and, and a human factor, mm. take away the football aspect. Yeah, and that's what we talked about beforehand in, in the dressing room. It actually wasn't so much about the football, it was about especially the chat we had at the end together. It was about, you know, well done. Um, keep looking after each other. You know, keep making sure that your, that your colleague's okay, making sure that his family's okay, because we're in, you know, the most unusual mm-hmm. times. And I, as I said, within that dressing room, we've got four or five people that have been struggling because um, their families are struggling. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's been, been really wonderful to watch uh, how everyone has really pulled together. And it's not even about winning and losing. Mm-hmm. I think that... that you know what we've formed over this last six eight weeks is I think it's quite special and um, that will see us through the season you know all, all the way through it as well they're, they're a good group of players and just finally the return leg on on Tuesday night if it's half as good as this then I'm really looking forward to it yeah and like I said you know I, I'd like to <clears throat> there was two teams out mm-hmm. there today and uh, you know all the press and everyone who spoke to me just said what a fabulous game it was to watch and it, it was two teams mm-hmm. who contributed to that um, what I do know is you know if we're not uh, if we're not at it on Tuesday and we're not concentrated and you know we're not a hundred percent right about the way we're going to do our job, you know I can see how they've won a lot of games this mm-hmm. year. And um, I think with the exception of probably Dartford, they've you know they've, they've beaten most teams there. It's a it's a tough ground. 
you know, it's a slope on it. You, you know, when you're defending that slope, you know, with the keeper's size kick that he's got on him, it's, it's a tough, tough half to defend. So, as I said, we, we fully respect what Hungerford are doing, um, fully respect them as a club. And, you know, I saw what, what I liked as well today is whilst it was ultra competitive between the two teams, you know, the, the, the respect from the two teams mm. afterwards, the respect between the bench, uh, the benches respectively. And I think that's right in this time, you know, in these unusual times. I think it's right that, you know, we uh, we do respect each other a bit more. And like I said, I thought both teams today put on a, for me, a fantastic mm. game of non-league football. I watch that every week. You know, that's mm. that's something I could watch week in, week out. And uh, there was two two teams that contributed hugely to that. Paul, fantastic words. Really, really good open interview. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Henry.